This is meteorologist Alex Pry, and we have yet another name change with Helene. Now, Hurricane Helene, as of the 11 a.m. advisory this Wednesday morning, 80 mile an hour sustained winds, the central pressure at 979 millibars, and then the movement is north northwest at 10 miles an hour. So, this is worth noting, it was moving northwest as of the 8 a.m. advisory, now continuing to make that northward turn as it is situated just to the northeast of Cancun off the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula. So continuing to strengthen over time and it is moving into some very warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. Expected to gain category two status by the time we get into this evening. You see there six central time and then after it does that going to continue its strengthening as it does approach landfall around the Big Bend area of Florida, more so closer to Apalachicola, St. George Island, those areas. But upon landfall right before landfall, looking to have sustained winds of 125 miles an hour and some gusts that are going to occasionally be stronger. A little bit of a shift in this cone or this cone of uncertainty though. Definitely seeing it slimmed on down and uh, kind of cutting off many areas here in central Georgia off of what our future view graphic was really saying the possible path was going to take. But one thing still remains the same. Obviously up here Friday 8 a.m. going to be a tropical storm by the time it reaches North Georgia, but here in central Georgia looking to be a low category one. So just above the threshold of a strong tropical storm. So taking a look at our current watches and warnings, we did just get an update on these as well. Now every county here in central Georgia is outlooked in some kind of tropical storm watch warning or a hurricane warning. So our northern counties and northeastern counties areas that weren't included in the last have now been included in a tropical storm watch. This means the tropical storm force conditions winds of 39 to 73 miles per hour are going to be possible within the next 48 hours and then taking it a step further. Those same tropical force conditions in those counties in the red that tropical storm warning that's for the next 36 hours. So the probability is looking like a little bit of a closer impact for those areas outlined in the warning. And then as I move my head right here, you can see right here the pink color is going to be a hurricane warning. So hurricane force conditions that's winds of 74 miles an hour or greater outlined for our southwestern counties. So that's going to include Macon County, Dooley County, Chris County, Wilcox County and Pulaski County for the tropical storm warning. We're looking at Taylor County, Crawford, Peach, Houston, Bibb, Twigs, Bleckley, and then down into Dodge and Telfair. And then everyone else here in Central Georgia still in a tropical storm watch. So taking it through Future View, we obviously have something to get through before we even see the impacts of Helene. You can see this frontal boundary further over to our west and our northwest actually going to collide with tropical moisture as we go throughout the overnight hours tonight. That's going to pop up some showers and thunderstorms here in Central Georgia. That has outlooked us in a severe weather outlook. I'll show you that in just a second. But 6 a.m. on Thursday, starting to see the outer bands of Helene lean takeover. That's where you're seeing that shift in direction of these outer bands of rain. And once we start the rain, virtually not going to stop basically all day. It's going to be on and off for counties here in central Georgia. Not everyone going to receive continuous rain throughout the day, going to have some breaks, but it, that which will be very nice in terms of the flood risk. But still, once we head into Thursday evening, that's when we start to see heavier bands closer to that center of circulation associated with the lean. That's when you start to see it creeping on up once we get into the 1 a.m. hour on Friday. By 3 AM right now. This is a easterly uh, easterly driven model. So this has the center of circulation going over our eastern counties here in central Georgia. But given the shift in the cone that we did just see and those upgrades to the tropical storm watches and warnings and the hurricane warning. Yeah, we are definitely looking at this probably going to shift a little bit west, which would have severe weather implications here in central Georgia for this dirty side, this east side. But right now, as it stands, 3 AM is when we're looking at that center of circulation moving into our southernmost counties. So the closer you are to this center of circulation right here, that's going to be the strongest bands of rain. That's going to be the gustiest winds closer to that eye wall. Obviously, it does look like it still has a little bit of an eye shape, a little bit of clearing down here in our southern counties, but that's not going to last too long. Going to have cloud cover build in and then is going to continue to disorganize as it moves through central Georgia, but not before it packs quite a punch, though. Continuing on into Friday at 5 a.m., still going to be present across many of our northernmost counties north of I-16 here in central Georgia. Georgia. And then as we go throughout the morning hours, continuing to move on up to the north, definitely moving very fastly for such a large storm. And then by 11 a.m., just looking at some residual cloud cover and then clearing on out for a nice and breezy Friday evening here. So taking a look at our storm outlooks, our day one. So this is for that overnight 
uh, potential for a severe thunderstorm or two I was talking about associated with that moisture colliding with that approaching front. Severe thunderstorms that pack a punch with heavy rain and gusty winds going to exist for much of our northwestern two thirds. So take it from Cordial, uh, Chris County, all the way down to Wilcox and then up here into uh, Washington County. Think of it as a line from there and everyone further up to the northwest. Now taking a look at our day two outlook, those counties that weren't included in tonight's outlook are included in a level two more probability for severe weather tomorrow, but specifically a spin up tornado being on that dirty side. And like I said, I think we will see a shift in this as we are getting more model runs in according to what the latest guidance is from the National Hurricane Center cone of uncertainty. So in terms of rainfall, we're looking at locally heavy amounts close to the 10 inch mark, but the best range is going to be about five to seven inches here across central Georgia and those areas that get heavy shower after heavy shower training over the same area. Definitely posing a threat for some locally heavier amounts, like I said, closer to 10 inches, but also everyone here in central Georgia outlined in a flood watch, low lying areas near bodies of water or areas that are kind of valleying that don't drain well, definitely more susceptible to flooding as we go across the next couple of days. Now taking a look at our wind gusts, you can definitely see the winds clashing from our front and also getting a little bit of a reinforcing push right here from the wind field associated with Helene. As we go throughout Thursday evening, the winds will get gustier and gustier. And then as we go overnight into Friday morning, yes, you're definitely seeing some quite gusty winds winds right there. Maybe a gust up to about 94 miles an hour down in Vidalia, the southern counties, those areas closer to the center of circulation and going to be first impacted, obviously going to have the gustier winds as Helene will continue to weaken as it moves over land. That wind field will still exist even into the overnight hours on Saturday, a little bit breezy and throughout the afternoon on Friday, even after we do clear on up. And now taking a look at our tornado parameters. So where's the severe weather risk lie? You can see some instability indicated further up to our northwest areas associated with that frontal boundary that we are expecting. But really, those southeastern counties outlined in that level two risk, that's where we're looking at the best potential for a spin up tornado or any severe weather. And it really does remain mainly to our east right now, but something else that I do suspect will change and we might get a further push further west into here in central Georgia. So for now, a weather impact alert is in place for all day Thursday and into the first half of Friday, those early morning hours on Friday. The impacts, they have been the same since about the beginning of the week. Gusty winds and heavy rain still trying to time out and fine tune exactly how fast those winds get, how much rainfall is going to accumulate in some areas, but also continuing to try to figure out which side of the storm we're on because it possibly will have severe storm implications. What you're going to need is to stay updated with us on the 13 WMAZ Plus streaming app, the 13 WMAZ mobile app, and 13 WMAZ.com in order to get the latest up-to-date forecast from me or myself. David Guerrero, Ansley Parker, and Ben Jones as we continue to track Helene. But also a weather radio would be fairly handy as well. So it, now is the time to go ahead and prepare if you haven't. So go ahead and charge uh, any electrical devices that you do have. Go get yourself some gas. Make sure you have plenty of water because we are expecting our fair share of power outages and trees down from the gusty winds associated with Helene. But also secure and store any loose items that you do have on outside that you don't want get blowning or, or getting blown around. Patio furniture, trash cans, outdoor decorations, trampolines, grills, and propane tanks, just to name a few. Go ahead and start putting those actions into place as of right now. So where we stand in the main headlines, a low category one storm moving into central Georgia is what Hurricane Helene will be as we go throughout the overnight hours on Thursday into early morning Friday. Still determining what side of the storm we're on. The guidance is pointing at further over to the west, so we're going to continue to keep you updated on that. That would have more severe weather implications here in central Georgia for that dirty side and a large storm with widespread impacts, not just here in the state of Georgia, but all over the southeast. So definitely want to make sure you're staying up to date and uh, here on the weather team. We are going to be sure to give you the all clear when it is good to do so.